everyone, Sekri Yasin here. And today I'm doing a photo study because I haven't done one of those in a while. And I figured I'll record it and, you know, walk you through what I'm doing. So the first thing I did was I just knocked down um, the value of the background because I felt it was distracting. And more than that, I like to start in black and white, or at least, you know, sometimes I do. Sometimes I go straight to color. But for this one, I wanted to start in black and white. And when you judge values, um, they're all dependent on the values that are already there. Like how bright something looks depends on the values around it. And for instance, her hair is pretty bright, but the background was a bit brighter. So then her hair looks less bright. So by making the values darker in the background, even if it's sloppy, like I just bleh, um, threw in some random stuff. Uh, it'll still be fine. And then the next thing I did was uh, I did a basic sketch, but uh, you might have noticed it was super small, like very zoomed out. And even right now, um, the reference image, it's quite small. And this is on purpose uh, because it's so small that I don't get to focus on details at all. Like I'm not going to get lost on details because I can't even see those details. Um, and so what you want to do when you draw an image is start with the big picture. Um, and ironically, the big picture is you get that from having the picture very small. You get to see the entire image and the entire composition and the big forms and the big uh, placement of things. And then uh, by zooming in as I go, um, I'm able to see more detail and then I'm able to paint that detail. So I'm not seeing anything that I don't need to see because yeah, if I, again, if I zoomed in, um, often what happens is you'll look at an image and you might see something like a change in the hair or something like it'll shift planes or maybe there's uh, a relationship with the nose and it has like an angle to it or something. And you look at that and you'll think, oh, that's, uh, I, I see that. And so you'll put that in uh, and you'll exaggerate it. Um, and that's because your brain is geared to see minute little changes, but from far, it's really nothing. There's not that much going on. And um, it's the same when we look at people, especially, um, you'll easily be able to see if some things like if their eye is a little too high or a little too low or uh, one of their uh, arms is longer than the other. You'll pick up on that. But usually it's a very, very tiny uh, change in, in things. It's not huge. So again, it's just one more reason to start off really small. And then when you want to add detail, then you zoom in. And when you add detail is pretty much when you've painted everything as far as you can take it with the image at that size, uh, when it's like, I, I don't know what else to add. I can't see any more details. Um, I would need to see more detail to be able to paint more. That's when you zoom in. Um, and here again, I zoomed in. Uh, when it comes to the brush right now, I'm using a brush by Deharm. Uh, it's one of his painting brushes. And uh, I think I have a link to his brushes on Cycro.net. If you go to www.cycro.net um, and you go to the resources section, uh, I have a bunch of brushes and books and a bunch of other stuff on that, in that area. Um, so I'm using his brush and what I'm trying to do as much as possible, and sometimes I'm failing at it and sometimes I'm succeeding, is I'm trying to get things down with as few brush strokes as possible. I'm not, you know, I'm not always, as I said, I'm not always succeeding in that. Um, but that's what I'm practicing on is to not make a bunch of little brush strokes, uh, but make the brush as big as it can be to make the strokes that I need to, to make. And, uh, it makes things difficult in terms of getting some details that you might want, but at the same time, I think it makes the image look a lot better and 
once you get used to it, uh, at least for me anyway, I'm hoping once I get used to it, it'll just be better. Because even now, um, I think my brush is too, too big. I mean, too small. Yeah, my brush is too small and it needs to be bigger. Um, but yeah, because of that, I can't get much detail into the face. And so the face stays pretty undetailed for a while. Um, and now what I'm doing is I'm add, adding some pattern on the dress. But the way I'm doing it is I'm just using the exact same brush that I've been using the whole time and just clicking it. And it's a textured brush. So when you just tap it, it has a texture. But when you drag it like a, a brush stroke, then that texture is more smooth and you can do more with it. Um, so when am I starting in black and white? Well, it's just easier to tell values and values are really the important thing um, when it comes to painting. That's usually what people get wrong. Either it's a drawing or it's the values. And so I want to get my values right. And in terms of translating it from black and white to color, it seems there's a lot of people with this issue. Uh, I know I had this problem when I first started, so I'm going to walk you through how I uh, do that later. Um, but for now, yeah, I start with black and white, and it's less for me to worry about. So when I do get to worrying about color, at least I don't have to worry about value. Um, now there's a bunch of mistakes that I can see <laughs> as I look at this. Uh, probably the biggest is her arm to the distance between her arm and her body. I made it way too close. And I think I did that by giving her too much of a butt, I think. Um, so here I'm trying to paint in the features. But as I said, because I'm using like big brushes, it's very hard to do any detail. And I'm trying not to zoom in and go ahead and paint in all those little details. And it's uh, it takes a bit of discipline, but I think it's, as I said, I think it's good. I think it's a good practice to uh, do this. Um, the reason is it forces you to think of planes and bigger shapes. And when you're doing that, it's harder to be just a photocopier um, because one of the problems with photo studies is often you end up in this just replicating one for one what you see. And you might not learn much if you do that. So I think it's better actually to change your image in some way. Uh, I do think it's an, it's a good exercise to be able to replicate something one for one. But even if you, through the technique, like using a bigger brush means you're going to be thinking a lot more than just copying like, oh, this color is like dark. So I'm going to paint dark here. And then beside that, there's this other thing. It's yeah, I don't know. Um, I struggled a lot with the torso, uh, getting the values right. And I don't know if it shows where I'm struggling or not, but um, as I said, it's been quite a while since I've done anything like this. Um, I think I'm doing more realistic stuff these days and doesn't mean I'm going to give up doing my stylized stuff. It's just I think it's good to do both because, I don't know, as I progress, it seems certain aspects of me want to do different things and I'm just letting them do that. Um, with the staff thing she's holding, uh, I changed it up quite a bit because I didn't really like the one in the reference and I'm guessing this is a character, but I don't know who it is. So I just made the staff, whatever. Um, feel free to write in the comments what this character is. I got this, um, I just searched Google for uh, royalty free images, but I'll post a link to the, this is a cosplayer. Um, I'm not sure uh, exactly her name. So, I'm moving into color now, and the first thing I did was I made a new color, uh, new layer, and I set it to color, and I filled it with like this um, yellowy brownish 
tan color that's sort of like the color of her skin. And then I made a new layer above that and I set that to color as well. And this is what I'm doing here is I'm just changing it. So there is that underneath tan tone um, and I'm letting that shine through in, in places. And I think that's from painting, like traditionally, that's how I would do it. Uh, I let things shine through some of the background so the colors seem more harmonized. So I got a bit more blue in the background and um, I'm pushing it a bit more to yellow in the hair and things. And then what I did is I've made a new layer and I've set it to overlay and now I've switched my brush to a large soft brush and I'm using this to add more value changes that aren't there before and some color variation because um, when you're only looking at something in black and white, sometimes you miss some of the value shifts that are there uh, and they're easier to see in color. Um, but for me, they're easier to see once the values are all correct. And uh, now what I'm doing is, this is pretty much just from imagination at this point, I'm starting to not look at the reference as much and just put things in where I feel like I want to add something. Um, so like with the lips, they're no longer the same lips and the eyes, I'm sort of changing them a bit. Um, but it's, I feel like it's an exercise as well to change things in your reference. Um, and that lets you practice how to make something look right. You know, like, does it still look right? Can I still handle this? Um, but I am, I, I, I'm, still trying to keep it sort of like the model. I don't want to go completely far away from that, but um, yeah, I did want some variation, something a bit different. So uh, here I'm just adding in some bigger brush strokes. Uh, again, making things harmonized, like with the background, uh, the hands were tricky to do because of that big brush thing um, and having to shrink the brush in this brush that I'm using doesn't really work well in a smaller scale, but uh, again, trying my best and trying to think about anatomy and structure and stuff like that. Um, again, when I look at it, all I see are all the flaws now, so it's pretty difficult for me to look at this and not see just a huge failure, but um, I have to get over that. I have to get over that. Uh, urge to just want to beat myself up over everything or for everything and just whatever it's a study it's a study and I think if I think of it that way I'm more likely to do more instead of just get you know depressed and here I'm just adding in some angles and straights and stuff not that they really exist just to make it more I don't know simplistic because I like that I like when things are more basic in terms of their shape and here I'm just screwing around with a dodge layer, color dodge layer, and making things glow just because it's, you know, it's digital, so you can do that. So I hope this helped, and thanks for watching.